Final Fantasy XVI is an upcoming JRPG by Square Enix, and as we're just a few days away from release, today I'll be breaking down everything you need to know before heading into what is evidently going to be one of the biggest video game releases this year. First things first though, this installment of Final Fantasy will take us to the medieval land of Valisthea, which is a completely new setting in Final Fantasy. Valisthea is supported by two continents, simply called Storm, that's the west side of Valisthea, and Ash, which is the east side. Spread throughout Velisdea, there are these giant crystals called Mother Crystals, and it's essentially thanks to these that the people of Velisdea can wield magic. However, thanks to something only referred to as the Blight, magic is dying across Velisdea, which is causing nations to war with each other over the remaining functional Mother Crystals. Speaking of nations, Velisdea is habited by six unique kingdoms, the Grand Duchy of Rosaria, the Holy Kingdom of Sanbrek, the Kingdom of Walud, the Dalmechian Republic, the Iron Kingdom, and the Crystalline Dominion. And throughout the game, we'll be traveling to each of these kingdoms in the evidently massive story of Final Fantasy. 16. We'll be playing as a man named Clive Rossfield, who's the eldest son of the Archduke of Rosaria, and we'll be playing through three distinct time periods of Clive's life. First his teenage years, then his 20s, and finally his 30s. And while the story will play into the conflicts of nations and wars, Clive's story is deeply intertwined with what's happening throughout Valisthea. And if you've played through the demo, then you'll definitely know what I mean here. A huge element of the story is that of the icons, giant elemental godlike beings that basically represents each of the different nations in Valisthea, and they're wielded by a select few individuals known as dominants, and each dominant is usually either royalty or a sort of military asset for each nation. For Final Fantasy veterans, the icons are pretty much based on the classic summons, but with a twist, because in Final Fantasy XVI, you don't actually summon the icon so much as you become one. And in the case of Clive, we'll see him using the power of one of the icons of fire, Ifrit, to fight against other icons in gigantic, godlike battles rivaling that of franchises such as God of War. Now, instead of going back to the turn based combat system of old, Final Fantasy XVI will be an entirely real time action oriented game, with quick time events sprinkled in throughout. Speaking of which, if you're a fan of games like Devil May Cry or Dragon's Dogma, well, then you're in luck, as the game plays very much like a DMC game. And this is because the combat director for Final Fantasy XVI, Ryota Suzuki, actually worked on both Devil May Cry 5 and Dragon's Dogma. So you should expect some really frenetic action and a deep combat system with a lot of variation when it comes to moves, spells, and other attacks. However, a really cool thing here is that if you're not used to frenetic action games and if you're more of a button masher like my girlfriend, then you'll be able to equip certain accessories called timely accessories that essentially makes Clive do certain actions automatically, like avoiding enemy attacks that only requires you to press a certain button during a quick time event. This will drastically lower the difficulty level for for the game, which is great for people who just want to experience the story and explore the world of Valisthea. However, if you prefer some challenge, then I suggest you unequip these and go for other items instead, like accessories that increase Clive's attack power or defense. There are also items you find that boost Clive's abilities, so if you find yourself using one skill pretty often, then a good idea would be to equip an item that boosts that skill in particular. Now, when it comes to abilities, you will unlock several new skill trees as you play through the story, with each skill tree unlocking with every icon Clive encounters. And you can select up to two skills to use at any one time for every skill tree. Say, for example, Ifrit's tree has several abilities you can unlock and invest points in to make them even stronger, but you can't use all of them at the same time. That said, you will be able to switch between different icon abilities by pressing the left trigger, which will allow you to create some pretty wild combos while fighting. And to put some personal input on this, after playing through the second part of the demo, I can definitely say that the combat system is surprisingly deep, and it very much plays like a Devil May Cry game, which is just great. However, you won't have to fight alone, as not only will you have accompanying companions at different parts of the game, but Clive's loyal hound, Torgal, will always fight alongside you. Torgal, of course, fights on his own accord, but you will be able to activate certain skills that are Torgal specific. Also, yes, you can pet the dog. Game of the year already, I know. Speaking of Torgal, I can highly suggest using the timely accessory that allows Torgal to use abilities on his own so that you can focus on just controlling Clive. 
This will provide at least some balance between not making combat too easy, but also not too difficult. Now, a common question is whether 16 will be open world or not, and well, according to the producer, Mr. Naoki Yoshida himself, the game will not be open world. However, from what we've seen in different footage, there will definitely be open world elements with you being able to explore certain areas on chocobos and such. So in rough terms, you could consider this a semi-open world in the style of God of War 2018, and God of War Ragnarok and similar games, and it wouldn't surprise me if there are bonus areas that you can visit besides the main story zones. Now, I'd say that this is probably for the best, as we'll be traveling all over the continent of Valisteia, and as you can imagine, having it be entirely open world would probably not portray the scope of Valisteia, as, well, it is a continent after all, and not just some small island. The game is also going to feature a main hub-like area referred to as Sid's Hideaway, Sid being a mentor-like character that Clive meets a few hours into the game. The Hideaway will feature things like blacksmiths to craft and upgrade accessories, armors and weapons, and vendors of different kinds, quest givers, and even a bounty board for different creatures and monsters that need exterminating. When it comes to performance, there will be the standard option to choose either resolution mode, which will run the game at the highest possible graphical fidelity at 30 FPS, and of course performance mode, which will run the game at 60 FPS but lower the fidelity a bit. To be perfectly honest though, the demo proved that FF16 will look amazing even on performance mode, so I'll definitely be playing with that on. Now one thing that you don't necessarily need to know, but that I feel needs to be mentioned either way, is the fact that the music is composed by Masayoshi Soken, and for Final Fantasy XIV players especially, this fact alone is definitely going to bring a lot of people over. As if there were any doubts about that though. But I guess no one was doubting that either way. Mr. Soken is responsible for perhaps some of the most memorable pieces of music I've ever heard, so if there's one thing you should absolutely pay attention to while playing the game, it's the soundtrack. Composers and songwriters don't always get top billing whenever it comes to video games, but in the case of Mr. Soken, I just feel that it's absolutely necessary that people appreciate the love and effort this dude pours into his music. What I'm trying to say here is to bring a lot of paper towels, because no matter how tough you are, you'll be doing a lot of crying as you play through this game. Finally, we do know a little bit about New Game Plus, and according to a recent interview with IGN, FF16 will let you select something called Final Fantasy fantasy mode after beating the game. And this introduces an array of surprises like new enemies, and here we see Clive fighting a chimera, which is just one example of something that's new in New Game Plus. Of course, as you'll have unlocked all the icons upon beating the game the first time, all your abilities and progress transfers over. But you will also apparently get a bonus item called the Ultima Weapon that's available for crafting. This obviously sounds like it could possibly be the strongest weapon or ability in the game, since Ultima weapons and spells usually tend to be just that. And that, my ladies and gentlemen, is basically everything you need to know before heading into Final Fantasy 16. But do let me know if I missed something in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe and all that good stuff if you want more content like this. Now have a great day, Mr. Olten, signing out.